Anyway. Uh, so, uh, Super Smash Bros. is not going to be at Evo. Oh, there's Ouija you know Gamer. He said, why? he said, Glover stream when? <laughs> oh, okay. Um, all right. Um, I, the only, I, I did just look at that. Um, I see people saying that Nintendo's doing it just because it's Nintendo and they, they pick and choose. The, uh, Smash, yes. Their... So, um, Fucking... It's just Nintendo being Nintendo. So Nintendo has made... I'm reading an IGN article here. Nintendo has made the decision to not have Super Smash Bros. game be a part of EVO 2022, the world's largest fighting game tournament that is no, uh, now owned by Sony. I'm willing to bet this has to do with something something to do with the fact that it is now owned by Sony. Um, yeah. So uh, they... You know, EVO had a message. And this is a little bit old news, by the way, because, you know, our streamcast is only every two weeks right now. Um, maybe someday we'll change that, but for now. And, uh, so this news came out, uh, uh, March. When did this news come out? I don't know. It was a little while ago. This tweet is from February 26th. There you go. So, um. They announced, you know, no Smash Bros. at Evo. It's kind of a big deal. I mean, we, you know, Smash Bros. has been there for a really long Very time. Long 2007 time. is what the little tweet there says. 2007 is how long Smash Bros. has been at Evo. So, um, kind of a, kind of a big bummer. I assume, I'm trying to think, like, I, well, they just announced the lineup, actually. But I the other thing that I could think of potentially as to why Nintendo is not putting the game there or not or saying they can't put it there is because of the fact that Nintendo announced that they are going that they were going to have their own championship uh, tournament. Yeah, and I and I figured that probably has something to do with it too. Um, I'm sure that's like you know they don't they didn't want to like run the risk of like splitting viewership and somehow getting less money because of it. Maybe. And I don't they know when... Everybody focused on them. I don't know when they're doing theirs. Um, well, they did it three weeks ago. Uh, did they already do theirs? No, oh. I was kidding. I was joking. Um, well, you got me. Um, yeah, I don't know what their main stage game is now. I know they have the Evo lineup. Um, I might enter Guilty Gear again this year. Although, is it online? I actually don't even know. If it's online, like last year, I might do I might do Guilty Gear again. I was planning on playing some Guilty Gear soon. Um, but uh, yeah, I uh, it's it's a big bummer bummer for uh, Super Smash Bros. fans. And you know, what do you do though? I mean, uh, they got plenty of other games. That's the nice thing, you know. <clears throat> I'm still gonna watch a lot of Evo matches. Like I'm a big fan of all fighting games, so I'm, tr I'm trying to think, you know, if they have. And once again, I don't remember the lineup. I like Grand Blue Fantasy Versus a lot. Um, um, Dragon Ball Fighters is obviously there. That's probably going to be yeah. one of their big ones. All right, so I found the lineup. I don't know if it's going to get updated at all, but um, from what I can see here, it says Street Fighter V, Guilty Gear, uh, Mortal Kombat 11, Tekken 7, King of Fighters 15, Melty Blood. Uh, Ooh, that's Fighters, cool. Grand Blue Fantasy, and uh, they're putting Skullgirls, second encore, in there. Okay. Uh, I mean, it's a really good lineup. <laughs> uh, that's, yeah, that's a really have good. We seen, have we seen a Schoolgirls game at Evo before? I thought they were going to do it when they did the, did they not do it last year? I do not know. I'm going to look okay. it up. Okay. But, oh, uh, yeah, they, did. they did do it last year. Melty okay. Blood. That's cool. That's new one. I, I want that game. I still haven't played it. Uh, King of Fighters 15, obviously that just came out, so it's kind of a big deal. Yeah, I like all these games. I the only one, you know, I'm actually the two I'm not the biggest on is uh, Mortal Kombat 11 and Street Fighter 5, but I understand why they're there, yeah. you know. But those are the yep. two. Um, I like Street Fighter, uh, Mortal Kombat. I really, actually, don't really care for. I just don't. Mortal really Kombat uh, is basically just, you know, it's the same thing that they've had for the longest amount of time. It's just getting more gory as time goes on. Um, I think that they're trying to focus more on the gore aspects of the game as opposed to, like, advancing the... Yeah. The, uh, evolving their gameplay. I it's just... just the same. I've always just felt like it feels... 
the controls especially feel a lot, a lot less smooth than the other fighting games, yes, especially. They do. They do. They feel I, really I like tight. Yeah. Yeah, they do. I um, played a little I, bit of it, and it's not very. You know, I might. Um, if this is all online, once again, I have to look, but. Um, I wouldn't mind doing Dragon Ball Fighters. I need to brush up on that one a little bit. Guilty Gear again uh, this you year. Do some Dragon Ball Fighters streams. I would play Dragon Ball Fighters on stream apps. So fucking lootly, <laughs> I love that game. Like, um, took me a little bit to get into uh, as a fighting game because that was when they were really changing arc system works, and I was used to the old school like Blaze Blue and stuff. But yeah, uh, no. Oh yeah, no cross tag battle. I just realized that no cross tag battle this year. Um. I would like to see Melty Blood just on the account. I haven't seen a whole lot from that game. So I like how this turned into an Evo just segment. Uh, that's okay with me, though. I'm, I, I'm, I'm, when is Evo actually this year? Oh, I just closed the fucking page down. I'm looking, I, I have a page here. Um, no Marvel versus Capcom stuff still. August 5th to the 7th. So. Um, there is a hosting stage this year, so maybe it's not online. That kind of sucks. Which would be a bummer, but I thought that they said to uh, sign up on Smash.gg. I guess I could go there real quick um, for some of these games. Um, I It's possible that they are doing some okay evo 2022 so they they're doing something here let's take a look let's take, let's take a quick look we got time we got a little bit of time um evo returns to offline competition um okay so let me see here as an example if i wanted to enter guilty gear let's take a look click on guilty gear they have a really nice setup on their on the smash.gg this year last year was a little messier and then smash.gg starts glitching out as usual here i get i get this up on the screen for you guys so you can see it too what i'm looking at here which is just a screen glitching the fuck out maybe i'm not going to get to look at look at this what the hell is this all right um I'm not doing that, by the way, for anybody watching that. It is just doing that on its own. Um, let's try to click on Dragon Ball Fighters. Uh, it's just not going to load for me. Okay. Well, um, I don't know. I don't know if you just, like, register on Smash.gg and then you have to actually go to the event... Okay, maybe you maybe that is what it is. So maybe it is only in person this year because when you go to register, you have to pay like 80 bucks. So I might not get to stream it this year. Big bummer. Big bummer. That sucks. Yeah. Yeah. There's other I'll, online tournaments. I'll look into it, but yeah, I would definitely love to play more. I would not I would not travel to Evo <laughs> unless I had money to participate, uh, and, do very good. and then just lose. Uh, <laughs> pay eighty bucks to just lose. It would be yeah. fun to go, but um, all right. Well, uh, anyways, we'll just we'll move on to the next subject since we just saw that disappointing news. Uh, uh, Pokemon Gen Nine was announced. This is also old news. That was really unfortunate. That came out like right after the last streamcast. That seems to be a running, a running thing with us, though. Oh, we'll here's it. I knew something, and then something big happens. Yeah, yeah, I knew that when we did a two-week streamcast, that someday we are gonna have to switch it to one weeks, every week, because uh, it's just, and sometimes you get lesser news because of that, but. When you do the two-week ones, you miss out on these things. You're late to the party. And then today's YouTube scene, you really have to, like, you know, upload things, like, fucking immediately. Like, people upload their state of play reactions as they're doing it sometimes, right? So. Yeah. I mean, they, they'll, they they'll you know, they'll do it. They'll stream it live. And then it, right after, just upload the VOD to their channel. Yep. And uh, I forgot to do that yesterday with ours. So, uh, <laughs> that's okay. 
but yeah, basically, um, I knew that I knew that was going to be a bit of a thing, and unfortunately, sometimes the bigger things and uh, you know get announced right after we do a streamcast. So right after we did the last one, and I didn't stream it either because it was at nine in the morning, and I you know I didn't expect this. I don't think a lot of people expected this, but Pokemon Gen Nine was announced. Uh, it is starting to look more like what they were kind of hoping for on the Switch. So, I think I could be wrong because the Pokemon community is super fucking... Uh, let's find every little thing that we can find because it's such a big franchise, so we have to make sure that it's perfect. Um, whatever you want to call that. Uh... <laughs> Entitled? They're very picky. They're very, very nitpicky, picky, and every other kind of picky that you can think of. Um, I think, though, the vast majority of people are a little bit more on board with Game Freak now than they were with Sword and Shield. Um, I think maybe they finally got into a place where Game Freak feels good, the people feel a little better about the direction of the series although maybe they don't love it i think they're willing to play it although let's be real i think they were always willing to play it they just said they weren't but that didn't mean they liked it um i think we're you know when sword and shield came out my big knock on the game was like say what you want like whether you like it or don't it was a very polarizing game and you don't want your game to be polarizing. You know, you want the vast majority of people to like it. So whether you like the game or not, like if you absolutely love Sword and Shield, you can't deny that having the game being super polarizing uh, is a good thing because that means that they're not doing something right if you are split 50-50. And that's kind of what it felt like. Sword and Shield felt like 50-50. Um... Obviously, I think most people liked it, but if we're talking about the people who had a voice in the community, we're not talking like little kids who enjoyed it and played it. Yeah, it kind of felt like adults were like, you know, maybe 50-50 split on whether they like Sword and Shield or not. And even the people that did like Sword and Shield, like, you know, I like it enough, were like, yeah, but it's still one of the worst Pokemon games. Like, you know, I, I would put it second to last. I, well... I'd have to go back and play it, but I just remember really not loving X and Y. Um, the more and more I think about it, I might like it even less than X and Y, and so that's not it's not a good thing. But um, <clears throat> the DLC, so you know, Sword and Shield had the wild areas; they were okay. Um, the DLC for Sword and Shield expanded those wild areas; they were a lot better, and they were a little bit of a glimpse into the future. Arceus comes out, and this is, now we're talking, right? Now we're talking, like, this is a big open world, although there's, it's, like, open world split into areas. It's like Monster Hunter. Right. Now, this game might still follow that. I, I don't know, but my best guess is it's more straight up open world, but probably... I can't imagine it's going to be like a you go to your uh, go to a home village and then you like go out into a certain area. I don't think it's going to be like yeah, that. But I do yeah, think thing, the limitations of the switch are going to make yeah. it so that you can't have it just completely open world, but it's going to be more open world. This is what they wanted. This is what they were building up to and that's why I said Pokémon fans, I know Sword and Shield's disappointing. Be patient. It's the first one on the Switch. And they made some mistakes, maybe Nash, the Dex, I don't even hear the Dex conversation anymore, stuff like that, right? They made some mistakes, but people treated Game Freak like they were like fucking Ubisoft, like this terrible villainous company. I'm like, no, they made a bad game. That's not a sin, right? Like, you know, it happened. So, anyways, um, what were you going to say? <laughs> you said exactly what I was going to say. Oh, okay, so, sorry, yeah. It, it, the limitations of the Switch. Yeah. Like, they want the big open world game, but you got to remember, this is a game coming exclusively exclusively to the Nintendo Switch, so they can only make it as big as the Nintendo Switch can handle. Right, and then and then also like when you think about how big these games get, like you know, Sword and Shield, it it does the open world thing, and it's not perfect. Um, you know what I might do for you guys too? I'll just play the little trailer in the background. Um, 
while uh, we talk about it, although I will have it on mute because Nintendo is like, no! Uh, but <laughs> Nintendo grabs you by the balls very um, quickly with that kind of shit. Yeah, but, uh, you know, so uh, there you go. I mean, I... So, the the thing with that was the thing with Sword and Shield is like you know as far as open world Pokemon games go like the wild areas were pretty darn close and then like we got a little closer and finally Arceus and now this right so um, trailer was pretty cool I saw it you know like I didn't watch it live like I said I saw it after the fact and um, and I actually probably shouldn't play this whole trailer because I'll post this on YouTube but you know it's just the little this little cop guy running around a lot of people thought it was like Detective Pikachu and then they start showing screenshots and I'm not gonna lie I got a little emotional when I saw the starters and I was like oh, that blew my mind I was like oh shit it's gen 9 my first thought was this is too early and then I like warmed up to the idea and you know there's the starters right there I'll obviously choose the duck but I really like the green cat um I always choose the water one though you know so we got our starters it takes it's inspired by um Spain, right? It, I think that's right. Um, people you say it's inspired by what? Spain. Oh, Spain. Yeah, Spain. Spam. <laughs> it's inspired by spam in a can. Um, so, uh, you know, there you go. Um, I'm trying to think if I have any other thoughts. Uh, I know Pokemon oh. is a big, you know, for my stream, especially everybody, you know, <clears throat> whenever we talk in Pokemon and the Brocco Clock, you know, stream. Those are always the highest viewed streams and people. Um, yes, I will probably pick um, Quaxley, uh, Ouija Gamer. So there you go. Um, are you are 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 you gonna get this game? I guess I should ask first. And if you I, maybe, I was yeah, gonna, I was gonna say that. Um, I think if I do get this game. I'm probably not going to do what I have been doing because I've been pretty let down by these games the last couple times I've been doing it, but I'm probably not going to get both versions if they have, like, that special edition that comes with both of them. Oh. I'm probably only going to get, like, one of them. That's I'm going to say I'm that I planned on getting both versions of Diamond and Pearl, and I was a little... I didn't have money at the time, so I was a little disappointed that I wasn't able to get both versions. I got just Diamond this time, and I'm like, you know what? I'm cool with that. Like, I haven't even looked back yeah. at that. I've never even well, thought about going back to get Pearl. I don't even know why I would want both. Ver they don't even need both versions of these anymore, okay? If that is one thing Arceus proved, it's like, we do not need two. Can we just have one? Yeah. I'm getting Violet. But, or is that what it is? Violet? Yeah. I, Scarlet? I mean, I'm getting Violet. I, if I were to get one, I'd also get Violet, because Violet's my fucking yeah. my favorite. You know, purple's my favorite color, so, like, that, that would just go better with me. Yeah. Um, main characters appearances. I don't actually know what the main character. Is. Okay, actually, that is one. Th that is the last thing we'll touch on, and then we'll move on. Um, oh boy, the designs of the main characters. That is the worst thing about the trailer. This trailer, this game looks great. I think this looks like a really good Pokemon game. I'm really looking forward to it. We'll see. Uh, that is the one thing most people kind of universally agree on. I completely agree with them. The designs of the two starting the female and the male oh, protagonist like the play the person we play as yeah oh, oh boy they God. they look i don't know man uh, i know it's probably some kind of spain inspired thing i'm trying to be lenient but you know what really kills it to the eyes their eyes look a lot less actually they look more realistic and it's 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 kind of ugly to me i don't mm -mm. it's off putting yeah they don't look very good they look it like they came like out of some Fucking kids, uh, like, like elementary outfits for kids. But from yeah, Spain. no, they do look like they're in elementary school or something. And which I get, they're younger. But well, actually, no, Pokemon kids are not elementary. Like, they're ten usually or something like that. And then yeah, it just looks like which I guess outfit, would like just a, like a school outfit is what it looks like. Yeah, I, which you, I think you is the, the sh on the shoulders. They have the the like badges on the sides of their shirt that usually would be like the thing that would show your school that you go to yeah i think they are supposed to be boarding school inspired because that's like a thing and but i don't i don't care i don't care they just don't look i don't like the way they look i don't, um, I don't like it either no wow. not not digging it not digging they it. even have like the shitty knee-high socks too come on yeah 
Um, so I, I do agree with that. I did not, and I think most people agree with that. I did not like the appearance of that. So, um, <clears throat> anything else you want to add to uh, Pokemon? Have we seen what like the other like main characters look like, like the gym trainers at all? I don't think so. I think they just kind of showed some town like some areas that you'll be yeah. able to explore if that's what the main characters look like the playable characters look like i'm actually worried about what they've done for the like the the gym leaders yeah and no like, I, I don't i don't think so the towns look really stuff. fucking nice though man they look cool god the, the the environments just look cool overall the the biggest thing that i that i like felt whenever i looked at the city was like one of the pictures of the city reminded me of the this the city from sword and shield that had like all the the brick buildings yeah oh yeah 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 um i really like the environment so far some of the pokemon look a little better like the lighting like magnemite some people are like it's the same model i'm like it is but if you like really compare it like he's got a little bit of lighting and some shading to him now like they look the pokemon look a little better you know um it, it is definitely the same models but some of them do have some nice little touch-ups yeah they have some touch-ups and stuff so um you know they've been building up to this and i there you go like Unfortunately, yeah, we had to have a subpar to shitty, depending on where you stand, Pokemon game, and then we had to have some DLC that were like, why wasn't it more like this, and then finally a side game to really wrap it all up, but uh, I'm thinking this one will be pretty darn good. Here's to hoping. Yeah. Anyway, uh, <laughs> uh, Game Freak's not out of the water yet, but they're they're on the right track um so i actually real quick before we start the next i just want to check our uptime to see if we have time to talk about the rest of these topics because there's one we have about 18 minutes we have 18 minutes okay okay um so i have i have how many topics do i have lined up i have i have three there's one there is one i absolutely want to get to so I think we're going to cut out uh, one of them. Do you want... Would you rather... Would you rather... I'll give you an option. Talk about Halo Infinite Season 2 update coming out. Because we haven't talked about Halo a lot on stream, but there hasn't been a whole lot to say. Because all their updates have been delayed and stuff. But they did announce Season 2 stuff finally. Or would you rather talk about how the new Fire Emblem game is probably coming out this year? Yeah, did you know that? <laughs> not well, the not the not the not, not the, the Muso one. Not the Muso one. A main line. Mm. Huh. I wonder have they revealed any information about it? Okay, we're going to talk about it. So, <laughs> because obviously um so I think I I want I threw this in there because I think and I don't remember if I said this on the streamcast. No, I I totally I said it before the direct. <clears throat> I said I thought there would be a Fire Emblem game this year because it's about time. It's a little weird. They've been very quiet. Blah 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 blah. And then what we got was this Muso game, which looks really cool, and I'm really excited for that. Actually, so much that I pre-ordered a Japanese version of it because they have a special edition there. <laughs> so. I pre-ordered their little special edition, so I'll actually have a Japanese copy of the game. So that I'm excited for that. However, I still thought it was a little weird. And then it was February. So this article's from February 20th. I'm not sure if that's the earliest the news came out, but this is a few weeks ago that there is a, an insider. Um, let me read the story. I'm trying to get to the meat and potatoes of it here. Um. According to a well-known insider, Emily Rogers, on the Famaboards forums, the new traditional Fire Emblem game from Intelligent Systems is almost finished. It has a development of more than three years with support studies, and it would arrive in October 2022 or at the beginning of 2023. According to what Rogers says, Nintendo would release Fire Emblem Warriors Three Hopes in the first half of this year, of the year, excuse me, um... <clears throat> 
And in the second half, wait, what? And the Nuevo Fire Emblem Day Intelligence Systems, I have no idea what they're trying to say there, in the second half of 2022. Although there is a possibility that the game will be delayed until 2023 so that it doesn't have to complete to, to compete excuse me, with Xenoblade and Bayonetta 3 in the fall. Uh, Rogers believes that the smartest thing for Nintendo would be to launch a successful game like Fire Emblem alongside the niche... Uh, alongside the niche series such as uh, Bayonetta 3. So if they were going to launch it next to either Bayonetta or Xenoblade, they're going to go with Bayonetta. But um, it was something that uh, I had thought, like, you know, even though they announced that Muso Fire Emblem, I did kind of have a deep feeling like maybe they're not out of the water yet. Maybe they still have a mainline Fire Emblem game. It's time. I mean, it's time for a mainline Fire Emblem game. It's been a while, right? Didn't we say, like, the three-year anniversary of Three Houses is coming up? Uh, it came out... I just had it up. It's in the summer, isn't it? In 2019. 2019? Uh... So, yeah, almost three years. It'll it'll be three years at some point this year. It was in July, July 26, when it came out. There you go. So, um... Yeah, uh... <laughs> now, normally, once again... It's not a definitive rule of thumb. I hate to report on rumors. I hate to report on rumors because rumors usually do just a couple of things. One, it's somebody just making a wild out there fucking prediction and everybody's like, he's right. He was right. Well, was he right or did he or she? Were, were they right or did they just make a prediction because you can predict that there's probably something Mario Kart related coming out this year and then we were all right because it's been a while. Like, you can make that. <laughs> you can make the prediction they're going to show Metroid Prime 4 this year. Can we all make that prediction? Like, there's, yeah. you, you know, if, if in a month I see like a, oh, this video is like, rumor, Metroid Prime 4 will be at the Game Awards. Okay. They could be making a wild fucking guess because we could all see that coming. Um, that doesn't make them right. It means they, well, it makes them right, but it doesn't mean that they knew what they were doing. I generally I, only report on rumors or I'm going to talk about rumors when I have some kind of trust that there is a deep truth to it. Emily Rogers is somebody who has broken some things before, so I was like, I'm going to throw this in the streamcast. There you go. Cool. Yeah. Man, hearing you say that, though, like, I just saw this. This is kind of off topic from that, but... Go ahead, yeah. A few days ago, uh, I saw a video of, like, Alex Jones talking about... Oh, God. Yeah. But... Where is this going? <laughs> well, just, just how you were saying, like, you know, if people can say whatever they want and like you know they'll you know you say enough things you, you'll eventually be right with some oh, of those things uh, and i saw people arguing about how uh like how it's, it's either he's he's right all the time and he really knows what he's talking about and then other people are saying like yeah well you say en enough things you're gonna eventually get some things right yeah <laughs> a dog's ass shines twice in the sun a day yeah <laughs> yeah yeah no yeah yeah i got you um you throw enough, yeah, what's the other one? You throw enough darts at the board, one of them's going to land, you know, um, <clears throat> that kind of thing. Yeah. No, I got you. Yeah. Yeah, that's 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 why rumors drive me nuts. And the other thing with rumors, too, is sometimes, like, when, you know, it's a big rumor, somebody, like, predicts it, and then they are absolutely fucking right. Sometimes it takes some of the hype away from the announcement. So, you know, I try not to lean too heavily into them, but I, this was one that was like, I feel like this is worth it. It's not going to kill too much, you know. Like, once again, can we all predict there's probably a Fire Emblem game coming out? It either it's gonna be announced this year. Like I think we're getting a new Fire Emblem very it's very been a soon. While. Yeah, it's been a while. Um, <laughs> it, well, there you go. We did we did that topic. So uh, I'm not once again. I'm not sure where we're at here on time. Uh, uh, Eleven minutes. Okay. So we're gonna skip the conversation about Halo. Infinite season yeah, two. I have, I have not been keeping up with Halo, so if we were to talk about it, it would. I'd just be like, well, it'd be exciting because it's new <laughs> to you. But yeah. um, I actually don't know what they're doing either. I know there's some, you know, new armors, new maps, a ton of new maps. I think. And uh, I fucking hope so. I got so sick of playing those same five fucking maps. New big team maps too because the big team maps fucking suck in Halo Infinite. They are the worst fucking big yeah. team maps. Well, big team maps not only suck, but it was also just the game mode in general that was like completely broken and just horrible. 
Yeah. Not yep. even fun. <laughs> So, um, well, let's move on to our last topic. And I don't know if you heard about this. Uh, when I sent you the topic list, I didn't even think to explain it to you, but I guess I can now in case you didn't talking hear. talking about the, the thing with the uh, gorilla? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Uh, it's Elden Ring related. Wow. Um, imagine that. Everything's Elden Ring related right now. Um, me and Gunnar were talking about this at the end of the last stream. We did not talk about it on stream because gunner said he thought it would be a good topic for us and i was like you're absolutely right i should put this because i have a lot to say um and it could totally take up the last 10 minutes of our time so um yeah so uh elden ring released obviously uh i don't know if we talked about it at all in streamcast 4 i think we talked about like it coming out right like it was right before it came out right the last streamcast so Wait, um with what for elden ring coming out yeah yeah yeah, we talked about, like, it was, like, one or two days before the game came out that we did our streamcast, right? So we mentioned it. Well, actually, I think it might have been after it came out because I do remember that we were... Well, I don't actually remember if we were t if we were talking about it or if we were talking about the, like, early reviews of the game, but we were saying, like... I think that's we what it was. We were disappointed that, you know, Elden Ring kind of already fucking destroyed Oh, it our, ruined our, our segment? Yeah. Yeah, our segment. For, We're still like, gonna do that segment, the, the probably. But the year. yeah, it ruined our like way too early game of the year predictions because it's like, well, Elden Ring just won. That's right, because yeah. we were talking about early reviews of Elden Ring. So, th so it yeah. had not come out yet. It was coming out like the next day or the day after or something. But, um, anyways, uh, so Elden Ring is doing amazing right now. It's still being talked about. Everybody's still talking about it, and everybody's still posting videos and talking about this boss, that boss, their experience, this glitch, that glitch, whatever, like. It's one of the biggest games of the last 10 years, right? Like, maybe even 20. And um, that being said, there's a little bit of jealousy going on up in the gaming community there. Uh, if yeah, you didn't... I'm reading about it right now. Okay, yeah. Uh, so, um, the former... I'll, I'll just... I'll read the specific examples that came up on Twitter. Uh, former De Battlefield 2042 developer and now current UX director at Ubisoft, Ahmed Salama, I think I'm saying that right, um, pointed out that Elden Ring snagging a 97 average on Metacritic is proof that game critics don't give a crap about user experience. That's what user uh, UX is, by the way. Um, and I'll just I'll go to the tweets here, and I can I can actually bring it up on the screen. Although this website has ads all fucking over, um, he says I on Twitter you might be on the same website as me because I'm seeing ads everywhere. Well. Probably. Well, I don't know. M maybe it's like mpfirst.com. Um, no, never mind. No. Okay. Uh, <laughs> he says the fact that Elden Ring scored a 97 on Metacritic is proof that reviewers don't give a flaming poop about game UX. My life is a lie. He then receives i'll read these all and then we'll 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 dig into these fuckers uh, <laughs> he then receives a response from rebecca fernandez o'shea um who works for nix's i think it doesn't say in the picture here but i'll look i'll look real quick she says nor pc graphics stability and performance apparently as if that's not what, you know, From Software doesn't care about any of that stuff. And critics don't care about any of that stuff. And then she gets a response from a Horizon dev. Someone who worked on, uh, from Guerrilla Games, who worked on Horizon Forbidden West, I assume Zero Dawn as well. But he says, nor quest design. So people from From Software and game critics do not give a flying fuck according to these people about user experience, PC graphics, stability and performance and quest design. <clears throat> um wow. okay. <laughs> uh and I think this all came about cuz this person posted this picture of like if the, if Elden Ring was a Ubisoft game, this is what the user experience would look like. And this picture is just a fucking mess like there's Shit all over the screen. The game is com clearly like holding your hand, right? Like press A to jump, press X, X to activate this, and there's just. Yeah. Um, I don't know if you have that picture on your page, but I'm looking at it on stream right now. I. Uh, oh, that fucking picture. Okay. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Um. I I was trying to be nice about Horizon Zero Dawn ever since it came out because that is a game that. 
a lot of people like. A lot of people like it. PlayStation gamers, you know, it's one of their it's one of their babies. It's one of their exclusives. I tried really, really hard to get into that game. And I'm glad that Dunkey finally made a really he made a review of Horizon Forbidden West, which I have not played that one. So I'm not not really specifically talking about that one, but a lot of the complaints I haven't either. A lot of the complaints he had <clears throat> about the second game, I had about the first one. Um I tried so hard with Horizon Zero Dawn. It's not like a terrible game or anything. There's there's good things about it. There's plenty of good things about it, especially the the combat. Um I no longer feel like I have to be nice about that game because this guy came out and he had to be a fucking asshole about Elden Ring. So, let me let me just rip into these people a little bit. First of all, this picture is hilarious because this is absolutely true about Ubisoft games. The fact that this guy from Ubisoft is coming out and criticizing the user experience of Elden Ring means that he absolutely does not know what a good user experience is because Elden Rings is perfectly fine. It doesn't hold your hand. And the game just let it lets the player breathe. It lets them just go out and explore. Does this guy work on Assassin's Creed? I wouldn't be surprised because that's the type of game that holds your fucking hand. Especially modern day. You know, um... Somebody did come at him, this person, positive vibes. So, so somebody salty that they worked on an open world sandbox generator that makes uninspired games. Uh, and then he called him Ubisad. Um, the fact that de a bunch like devs are coming out like salty of another game's development too. It's just like it's like Elden Ring is not getting good reviews just because of I don't. I guess I don't know why they think it's getting good reviews. Like it's a. It's it's, it's not just a really good game. This is game of the year. And and it's gonna get game of the year more than likely over God of War, more than likely over, uh. Um. What's the other big sequel coming out this year? I know I'm missing one. Uh, God of War. God of War, but there's a, oh, uh, Breath of the Wild two. It's probably going to get Game of the Year over both of those. There's good reasons for these, you know. And then go on, going on to the next one, <laughs> this person talking about PC graphics. Don't even get me started on graphics. Stability and performance, okay. I'll give her that one. The game has not been the greatest stability-wise on PC. A lot of people have still said the game's still crashing Blah, blah, blah. Here's the thing. It actually goes to show how good Elden Ring is, though, because when you have a an issue like stability and performance and people still fucking love your game, like when Skyrim came out and it had glitches all over the place, some of them game-breaking, but the game is so fucking good. People don't care. They keep playing people, it. Some people even like the glitches too. Like, yeah. there's like item duplication glitches in that game, and people fully embrace that kind of stuff. Right. And, but even beyond that, like, if you wanted to mock them for those glitches, their game is so, so good. People can look past all of that. That's yeah. a testament to how good that game actually is. Because, because, you know, if Assassin's Creed going back to Ahmed here, were to have a game, were to have glitches and game-breaking shit like that, why do they get much, so much shit? Because you work on the same fucking game every year, so there's really no excuse. It's like, why are these games so fucking bad? Why do they have all these fucking issues? Raise your fucking level of standards, but we know Ubisoft won't do that. We can't look past that stuff with your kind of game, but we can look past stuff like that with a game like Elden Ring because it's that fucking good. It's it's true like you know games like skyrim that's why they get away with stuff like that you know if grand theft auto had a bunch of you know glitches which it, it's got a pretty decent amount although rockstar does polish things up a lot for games that are of their size um you know i i get i i just 
I, I can't even believe these are these. Act, you'd think you'd root on your fellow developers to, you know, here. It's just, it drives me nuts because I'm like, don't even come after Elden Ring. You want to come after, you want to come, you work at Ubisoft and you want to come after Elden Ring. And then I looked, you know, we had to look up, um, where's that, th where this girl comes from. Oh, Nixus. Nixus. So, <sighs> Nixus Software, a lot of you are like, who the fuck? Where, who, what did they make? Well, let me tell you. One thing that's really crazy about her comment in particular that I was talking to Gunner about this. First of all, when you go to Nix's website, you know what the first game that they're advertising on there for you is? Marvel's Avengers. Don't not even get me started on performance. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? Really? Oh my god. Really? And then we have Deus Ex and Shadows of the Tomb Raiders. Okay. So what does Nixes do? Well, they're part, they're actually part of PlayStation Studios as of July 1st last year. So I'm actually a little surprised that, and maybe they did. I told Gunnar, I was like, I was like, you know, if I was, if I was a higher up at Sony, I'd be like, girl, take that tweet down. We are friends with the people from, from software. Why are you coming after the people from, from, from software? Because we, you know, Sony owns Nixes software. So if somebody from Nixes is coming out and being like, yo, your game like does, has poor performance. Like I can't believe the critics didn't criticize you more. Like what? Now I'm sure that you know Miyazaki or whoever from From Software, any of the developers, so they probably don't give a fuck. They didn't look at these tweets. You know, if anything, they're probably like, oh, haha, they're jealous of us. Um, but I just and I do want to look real quick. I don't think they develop these games. By the way. From what I can tell with Nixes, they are, well, they are a video game developer, so maybe they do. But they specialize in porting games to PC, it looks like. Uh, they have close ties to Square Enix Europe. They have ported mini games such as Tomb Raider, Marvel's Avengers, and Deus Ex. You've got to be fucking kidding me. They were purchased by Sony, you know, last year. Uh, so, the Ubisoft thing was one thing. You know, they definitely have no right to talk about. Uh, I know the oh, Ubisoft man. guy did not mention performance, but he mentioned the UX. But Jesus Christ, the, the fact that somebody actually came out from this company who ported the Marvel's Avengers game and wants to talk about stability and performance, I'm like, have you played that game? It's a fucking mess. It's a mess, and it sucks, too. And then... I'm literally calling the kettle black. <laughs> yeah. And then we want to talk about Horizon. All right. Quest design. Oh my god. I didn't think I was going to get super ranty on this. It just it pisses me off cuz I'm just like are is this really like th these are really developers coming out and not only attacking fellow developers but really not understanding like you know, uh, coming from three three games that are inferior to Elden Ring. I'm sorry, but Horizon is not as good as Elden Ring. Um We could talk about the quest design of Horizon a little bit <laughs> if we really wanted to. I will I will I will give him this. Between talking about UX of Assassin's Creed compared to Elden Ring, stability <laughs> of any of Nix's games, I have to imagine, compared to Elden Ring, and graphics. Why did we even go there? Come on. Enough with the graphics shit. Elden Ring is gorgeous. I know, right? Like, even... Jesus. I don't even understand them saying that. They, uh, no, I don't I don't either. And it, not only does it have better graphics, it has better art direction than probably, you know, 99% of all their games that they'll ever yeah. work on. Um, I will give him this. The quest design in Horizon Zero Dawn is not... It's not bad. Um... That was a big thing that they focused on with Horizon as well. Yes. They, their, their whole thing was they said that they didn't put as many side quests in the game because they wanted to put only a few but have them be really good. Like Which I, up, I it is time. one of the things about Horizon I really liked. I, I actually thought that was cool. It gives the side quest time to breathe. Um, not that you can't have a bunch of side quests and they work out really well. Fallout 3 was literally carried by a bunch of miniature side quests. Um... I will give him that. However, I don't want to hear anybody from fucking Gorilla Games coming. Well, you have to imagine they're a little bit peeved because Elden Ring came out and took all of their fucking, you know, took their all thunder. the air out of their out of the room. I think I would go. I would really dig into Horizon and Gorilla Games on this, but I would just 
because he said it way better than ever, I ever could, he's more articulate and he, he's funnier too. Go watch Dunkey's review of Horizon Forbidden West. You'll understand exactly how I feel about Horizon. Um, and it gives you a good idea of like, you know, why I think it's just, it's not it. You want to talk about an overrated game. Uh, <laughs> um, it has good things to it. But as Dunkey said, it's it, Horizon as a series, the first and second game, both of them came out. And then a game that came out just a week later that is much, much better and much, much more inspired to make everybody forget that Horizon exists and to make me go like, yeah, I probably won't go back and play that. Horizon is a game that many people will like, very few people will love. Everybody loves Elden Ring. It's it's just true. That's just a fact. Yeah. <laughs> it's well, it's it feels like it right now at least, but yeah. um you know, and I'm not once again, I'm not saying Horizon's a bad game. I I'm not even saying Assassin's Creed's a bad, although nowadays you're better. But yeah. <laughs> but yeah, we won't go into that. But but I'm not even saying Horizon's a bad game. Um but to have somebody come out like it's one of those things where it's like, oh, we respect you, Horizon Zero Dawn. But then if you call, you you come after me, you coming after Elden Ring, man. If I was at From Software, I would, I would probably keep my mouth shut because I want I would I wouldn't want to stir up any more trouble. But if I was a representative from from from, from Software or something like that, I would definitely be like, dude, you want to come after me? You got Horizon Zero Dawn, we got Elden Ring. Come on. I don't know. 